Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, I'm going to talk about five essential video editing effects and techniques that I think every editor should know or have in their toolbox. So I've got a couple of random clips on the timeline, and if I don't go too in-depth on every single technique, that's because I'll point you to a separate video where I have focused individually on that topic. But to start here, the first thing that we're going to talk about is just creating a simple title. I think this is a basic for many different types of projects. So in order to do this in Premiere, we actually have a whole title builder. So you can go to title, new title, and let's create a default still. When you press OK, you should see that the preview menu turns into the title editor. So I can click on the frame and type out whatever I want to type. And now that we have some letters written out, you can see we have options to highlight it, adjust the font and the size, typical with any type of word processor or text editor that you might be familiar with. If you actually look over on the right hand side, you can adjust the title properties. So here you could choose some more details aside from just changing the font, like the color of the text or the alignment of it or the tracking and leading. So if you pull apart the tracking, you can get that kind of spaced out look that you might often see, kind of a little bit more elegant looking if you want to call it that. And if you head over to the title actions, you can center it using these buttons here. So that there's a very simple way to create a simple title. You don't have to get too crazy with it. And then when you confirm your changes, you should see it pop up in your project media bin for us to click and drag over certain portions of the project. From here, you could always right click on the beginnings, add a default fade in or fade out or use keyframes in the effects control panel to adjust or slide the position in any way, you know, or go to the effects panel and add simple transitions that wipe the text on and off and things like that. But basically, a simple title like that, very easy to create in Premiere Pro and you have a good bit of options for adjusting the text and the character. Next, let's talk about coloring. So when we have a clip, if we actually click on the clip, we can always go to the Lumetri color panel on the right hand side. And if you guys don't see all these panels, you can just go to window workspace and reset to the default and make sure you're working on all panels mode. You should see all of these pop up. So in the Lumetri color panel, there's a lot of different adjustments we can make, but instead of actually adjusting it right directly on the clip, what I like to do is go to the project media bin and go to file new adjustment layer. This is going to create a blank adjustment layer in our project media bin. First to click and drag over however long portion of sequence of clips that we want or the entire project if we have similar clips that we want to apply similar coloring onto. So I'm working on this adjustment layer and in the Lumetri color tab we have a whole host of options. One, you can do basic correction. So here's where you can adjust things like the exposure, the contrast, the highlights. Things that if you didn't shoot them as you wanted in the camera, you can do a little bit of fixing and tweaking here. However, this isn't really where we're going to do the coloring. If we go into the creative section, here's where we can get a lot more creative with it. So let's say we wanted to get a black and white video effect. There's actually a ton of preset looks that come installed in Premiere Pro, like these monochrome Fuji or Kodak film looks for us to pick through, or there's different colorful looks as well and there's a whole host of different creative color options. You can also do minor adjustments like faded film for the faded film look, or you know, saturation and vibrance and tint and all that to get your own look. Alternatively, you could create your own looks from scratch if you want by adjusting things like the curves. If you're familiar with Photoshop, this handles with the darks and highlights of different color channels. So for example, if I pull the blues out of the highlights in the blue color channel and you'll see that yellow is revealed and you can do things like adjust the color wheels to tint the shadows, midtones, and the highlights with whatever different color you want. I actually have some good separate videos that break down all of these options a little bit more in depth so I'll link that to you but that's how you add color and color correct your clips and by using adjustment layers you can color correct entire sequences without having to do each cut and clip at the same time. Now let's talk about adjusting a clip's speed. So fast forwarding, slowing stuff down, and things like that. 
So these clips were shot in 60 frames per second. Different cameras have different abilities for different frame rates. So these were shot in 60, which means that I can slow them down by half and still retain a smooth look. Now there's actually a couple of different tools that we can use to adjust the speed. One, I can just right click on this clip and go to the speed and duration. And here I can do things like change it to 50%, that would slow it in half. Or you could even check reverse speed if you wanted to rewind the clip and play it in reverse. However, I'll leave it at 50%. And when I press OK, you see that the clip automatically extends to 50%. I didn't have the audio highlighted, but if you wanted, you could stretch audio in the same way, but then just know the pitch is gonna be all weird and things like that. So usually when you're talking about slow-mo, I delete the audio and play music behind it to create some cinematic sequences. But now you see the entire clip is playing at the 50% speed, and it's kinda got a smoother slow motion feel. Alternatively, if you press R on the keyboard or go here and grab your rate stretch tool, you can just use this to stretch the clips in or out and it'll adjust the speed depending on how short you adjust it. So if you want to fast forward a clip to fit in a certain small pocket of your project or stretch it out to a certain point, then you can always use the rate stretch tool for more precision. You can see that'll create a fast forward motion. Now the third and somewhat most advanced way to do this is right click on the clip and go to show clip keyframes and go to time remapping and speed. Now I'm gonna zoom in on this track a little bit just to make it bigger and you can see there's now a line that I can adjust on this clip. So if I drag it down, it'll slow the clip down or if I pull it upwards, it'll speed the clip up and you can see the clip length is adjusting. However, if I click on this little diamond here or I can click on this diamond in the effect controls panel, I now have split this line so that I can speed up certain parts and slow down the other halves without cutting things. And then I can also split that keyframe playhead so that the speed ramps from fast to slow in a smooth manner or slow to fast if you want. This is how you can create smooth changes of speed where the start of the clips might start off fast and slowly ramp into a smooth slow motion. Next, let's talk about video transitions. Now, to be honest, my favorite transition out of every transition is just the simple cut. That's one cut between a clip to the next. There's a lot of different things you can do with cuts. You could do fast cuts in between different clips to have a high paced, speedy edit, or you could just cut to the beat of music or just cut from one clip to the next. It's honestly, it's honestly the best transition in my opinion. The next most common one that you're probably gonna be using a lot is the fade. So just like we faded the title, you can right click and apply default transitions in between two clips. And the default transition is the cross dissolve. So that's gonna give you the cross fade. Now, if you're looking to do more special effect type of transitions, you can open up the effects panel. There's a transition video effects section that allow you to add wipes and fades and dissolves in different ways. However, the creative possibilities are pretty endless in the different types of flashes or cuts or mask type of transitions you can create by combining these different effects and keyframes. So I'll just point you guys to the playlist on my channel where I have dozens of different zooms and wipes and pushes that combine a bunch of different effects. So if you're looking for cool transitions, check out the playlist on my channel. But to be honest, the cut, the fade are my favorite too. Lastly, let's talk about music and audio. So you can drag music clips and sound effects right into your project media bin, just like you do video clips. So you can see here, this little waveform is a music track. If I double click on it, you can always preview any clips or sounds in the source preview menu here. And I also have a sound effect. Now these two are both from the YouTube audio library. There's actually a full audio library, just search YouTube audio library with a bunch of free sound effects and music for you guys to use in your videos. So this pop sound effect or whatever else you want, you can search them on there. That way you can add pop sound effects to your titles or whatever different elements of your video you're doing. And you can add music by dragging it onto the audio tracks in your project. So here you can see the audio tracks are green and you can see all the waveforms, just like any of the sound that was attached to the clips, you can see the waveforms on. And this is a way that you could lay your music down first and then go through and listen to the different peaks or hits of the music 
and then add your cuts and sequence your project so that it flows with the music as you want. You can also cut audio tracks. You don't have to use the whole thing and then fade them out at portions and times that make sense by applying the same default transitions, which will add a cross dissolve or fade out. You can zoom into those transitions and pull them in for a slower fade out and in. That way you can add music to certain cinematic sequences, but cut it down or delete it when, you're, when you want the clip audio to show through, like if you're talking or something. Additionally, proper audio levels are key when you're mixing talking and background music. There's no exact level that's gonna work in every situation, but either you wanna lower the entire track volume so you can lower it to negative 10 or 15 decibels and then just listen to it and see how it sounds together, or you can adjust individual tracks so you can go to the effects control and adjust individual volume points on different pieces of music or clips if you don't want to adjust the whole audio track. Another thing you can do with audio is if you want to adjust the talking audio, you can right click on those clips, go to audio gain, and you can do things like adjust the entire gain up some decibels, or you could normalize the peaks. So if there's too much crazy up and down, you could just normalize everything to negative two decibels, and then it will normalize the audio kind of. You do have to listen and be careful and test out with this type of stuff since there's so many different situations. But basically, listen to it with your ear, figure out what sounds good, and you don't want anything to be clipping, which you can kind of see over here the levels, and when things start to get red, that means they're getting a little too loud and clipping. So those are the five basic principles and effects that I think every editor should have a good foundation of that'll allow you to build most projects and then when you want to get into specific detailed effects, check out some of my other tutorials on how to combine those and create those. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube to stay tuned for all of my new future videos. If you're not following me on social media, you can find me at Show. Reach out to me, DM, Twitter, if you want to send me an example. And join in on the live streams and other cool stuff we do on there to stay tuned. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.